you know, and today we will not be doing quadratics. Today we will go to chapter one, quadratics. Keep in mind that the textbook I'm currently using is by Linsky, Nicholson and Western and is made by the Oxford University Press for the Cambridge syllabus. To know what to do with a quadratic, we need to know what even is a quadratic because if you don't know what you're doing, then you won't know what you're doing. A quadratic is an expression on the form ax squared plus bx plus c. In this video, we will look at two things, solving quadratics and graphing quadratics. To solve a quadratic, there are three ways to solve them. Completing the square, factorization, and using the quadratic formula. In this video, we will look at all these methods. To factorize a quadratic, one must split it into two linear equations which are easy to solve. For example, you can see this quadratic and you see you can split it into two linear equations and then solve them. Because if one bracket is zero, then the whole expression will turn to zero. But how? Sometimes factorizing a quadratic is not so easy. The solution is to use the window method, coined by my teacher. Using the last example, you can see this quadratic. And on the right is the window diagram for it. Please make jokes about this mathematician called, <laughs> with a surname called Window, and he popularized the window diagram. Please make jokes about it. I don't care. You can just tell your friends about it and this video, and you can start making jokes about a mathematician. A fake one, obviously. Look at the window diagram again. Notice anything? The numbers at the bottom are the quadratic, constant, and linear terms. At first, you might say, hey, this is such a strange order, but you see that there is an order to this logic. The vertically adjacent numbers, you should multiply them, and the big X in the middle means multiply the numbers on both sides of the diagonal line. So, 3 times 7 will turn into 21, and 2 times negative 5 will turn into negative 10. And the little plus at the bottom, which means add the two numbers at the end to get the x term. The window method works for all quadratics. Seriously, but not all quadratics. Because we'll see a method which is much, much more versatile later. Now for completing the square. Unlike factorization, this method is most useful when the quadratic condition is 1. However, this restriction does, comes with a greater advantage. It works on the general quadratic. This method can be used on a general quadratic, but it is almost impossible to find a factorization. Look, it even has a little formula for it. And why do we need to complete the square? Since there is one x term, you can solve the expression just like how you solve linear equations. Just isolate x. And this will come in handy later when sketching quadratic graphs. And here's a proof on the quadratic of the completing the square formula. Pause the video and you want to look at it in more detail. Now for solving quadratic inequalities. Let a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c has roots p, q, where q is greater than b and b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. You'll see why b squared minus 4ac is so important. In summary, you can see this table to see why the restriction and it is the inequality is important. And again, for this exam, you have to memorize this table. You basically have to memorize every single formula in this video to help you excel on this exam and the tables. Yeah, right. So I said there were three methods, right? So let's go on to the most dreaded method you all know, the quadratic formula. Well, it's one of the most dreaded and complicated formulas, but it's also one of the most versatile. So, for a quadratic x squared plus bx plus c is 0, the solutions are x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Hey, I can remember the quadratic formula. You can all do it too by just staring at the quadratic formula and memorizing it. And here is a proof of the quadratic formula. The proof's quite short for a formula, so pause the video if you want to look at it in more detail. So, you might notice one of our old friends, b squared minus 4ac in the formula. This is called a discriminant. It is also very helpful later on. 
This can provide a way to describe how many roots there are in the quadratic equation. In summary, you can see this table to see why this is important. Once again, you have to memorize this table. And now for quadratic equations in this guide. Some equations are just quadratics, but you might not see that at first. Take the equation, ax4 plus bx squared plus c is zero. It looks like a quadratic, but if you substitute y equals to x squared, hey, it's a quadratic! Then, solve the quadratic of y and substitute y is x squared and isolate x. There, you have the values of x you need. More complicated substitutions also work this way. What about more complicated simultaneous equations? Let the equation be y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c and y equals to P, px plus q. Subtract the linear equation on the quadratic one and solve the quadratic you have to get your values for x. And once again, you will also add the substituting to get y. And if you use the discriminant again, you will see why some simultaneous equations have no solutions. Moving on to quadratic class. Let the equation be ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. There are a lot of ways we can graph this. If a is greater than 0, then the curve looks like a u and has a minimum value. If a is less than 0, then the curve looks like an upside down u and has a maximum value. God, why is this not working? My slide's not cooperating. I'm sorry, there was a small technical error in the making of the slides. <sighs> if the quadratic can be written as x plus p squared plus q, then the vertex the minimum point on the quadratic is at negative p q. See how completing the square comes in handy? If the quadratic can be written as negative x plus p squared plus q, the vertex is at negative p q. Again. And it's pointing downwards. Not like the upwards quadratic which we just saw. The discriminant can also be applied to drawing quadratics. Below is a table of how many roots in a quadratic has versus the discriminant. And finally, the equation of the line of symmetry is y is negative b over 2a. I hope you enjoyed the barrage of formulas I just gave you. Pause the if you want to go through it again, you can play through the data at 0.75 times speed or probably get some subtitles, which I'm going to provide in the video. And thank you and see you in my next A-level maths video.